Let's bring in our panel. Joining us, Skyping in from Washington, D.C., former CIA analyst Fred Flights, and here at our South Florida Newsmax anchor desk, former CIA officer Fred Russman. <laughs> Gentlemen, to you both, we thank you. Fred Flights, let me begin with you. What long-term effects will the release of this report have on the CIA? Well, J.D. and Fred, it's great to be with you this morning. In terms of terrorist threat, threats, I think it's going to be a short-term matter. I think this will pass. The outrage over these programs occurred several years ago. I'm not real concerned that this is going to have a long-term effect in terms of terrorist threats. I do think it is going to hurt our relationships with intelligence partners in the future when we need to conduct a, a, a controversial operation. We're just telling other countries, you can't trust the United States because we will rat you out later that you worked with us. And I also think it has seriously undermined congressional oversight. Intelligence officials and officers and agencies are going to be less willing to trust and cooperate with the Senate and the Intelligence Committee after this partisan report. Fred Russman, you heard what Fred Flights had to say. We talked about recruitment and agents earlier, but what about the, the relationships we have internationally with other uh, intelligence organizations. Well, Fred's absolutely right. Half of the intelligence that uh, the, the clandestine service, anyway, produces um, comes from our liaison relationships abroad. And they have to trust us in order to be willing to pass uh, information to us and to be upfront with us. And this is absolutely going to be going to damage those relationships. Fred Flights, <clears throat> in your opinion, uh, do you believe this is a situation that basically hands the Islamo-fascists a propaganda tool to use to help their recruitment? Definitely. It's definitely going to be used by the Islamic State and by Al-Qaeda. Uh, I, I think it will have a short-term effect in increasing the threat level, but I'm hopeful that this will pass. And uh, Fred Russman, let me get back to you for the historical perspective on uh, on what you have seen during your days in the agency. We spoke earlier about the church committee in the Senate, the Pike committee in the House. A lot of people said in the mid-70s that was really the start of a caution, a timidity, the triumph of the desk officer rather than the case officer or the field officer, and that <coughs> led to 9-11. Does this set up the same kind of problem? It, uh, it does, not to the extent probably of the, the Pike and, and Church Committees of the mid-70s. But I want to say one thing about, about this. Uh, we, we just had uh, Senator McCain on just a, a few moments ago. And Senator McCain talked about torture and how bad that was and we shouldn't do this. And Senator McCain endured a lot of torture while he was uh, in the Hanoi Hilton. And I agree with Senator McCain. But what I want to point out is that Waterboarding and enhanced interrogations is not torture. This, these these uh, techniques have been endured by literally thousands of American uh, special, special operation forces and intelligence guys in their SEER training, their resistance to interrogation training. These will not do permanent harm to anyone. There's a doctor in the room. Th this is not torture. If Senator McCain had endured this type of enhanced interrogation while he was in Hanoi, he wouldn't be walking around like he does right now with dislocated shoulders and the, the lasting effects. Fair so this is, this is legal and this is not torture. Fred Russman in South Florida, Fred Flights in Washington, we thank you for your analysis. We'll continue the conversation after this.